I want to give us a thought this evening on this. In everything, giving thanks. Now, the thing that jumps out to me when I look at this verse is, first of all, we see uh, the willingness of man, if you would. What is it that God wants man to do? Well, he says, rejoice, pray, give thanks. Those are the things that really are, uh, notice their commands. <laughs> uh, we will see in just a moment, he said, this is the will of God. We are, as the people of God, commanded to rejoice, to pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in everything. Now, those words, think about evermore, uh, means all the time, always. Uh, the uh, expression here, without ceasing, means uninterrupted. Uh, it means without omission. Uh, you think about the expression as well, in everything give thanks. I mean, in every circumstance, uh, whatever you're going through, in all things giving thanks. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 tells us, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the word always in all things, for all things. So we cannot escape these commands. They are specific and ongoing, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, he says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. So the command is, right, rejoice, give thanks, pray, and the actions are all continuous. So when we think about Thanksgiving, it is a day that we have set apart and forefathers set apart for a day of national thanksgiving. But you know, for the Christian life, it ought to be an ongoing thing. Not just a once in a year thing, right? Because it's evermore. It's without ceasing. It's in everything. You know, these elements are present together repeatedly in God's Word. They are. Uh, we're here in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, but uh, go back to chapter 3 of the same book. Notice 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Uh, notice verse 9 and 10. We find these grouped together again. For what things can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Three things that are mentioned there again. Notice the praying, the joy, and the giving of thanks. Uh, in Philippians chapter 4, we find those again. Uh, we're more familiar with those perhaps in Philippians 4.4. 4, rejoice in the Lord always, right? And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, rejoice. Uh, making supplications, prayers, with thanksgiving. You see, those kind of go together. Uh, it ought to remind in our lives that when we think about our Christian lives, these things are present, and typically when one is present, the other ones are present. Uh, why? Because think about it, someone that's truly praying is going to be a thankful person. Someone that's praying is going to be a person that rejoices. Someone that rejoices is someone that's praying that's thankful. Someone that's thankful is someone that prays and that rejoices. You see, those go together. That, that is something that ought to uh, describe the Christian life. Now think about these expressions again, always, we find throughout the Word of God, evermore, without ceasing, in everything, night and day, for all men. The Lord places such importance because of what? Because of the contrast that it communicates to a world, to the world. You see, the world is the opposite of rejoicing, praying, and, thank, and, and giving a thanks. The world is the opposite of that. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 tells us, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. That uh, pretty accurately describes this generation that we live in, but I believe it describes every generation that is worldly. You see, unthankfulness ought to be the antithesis of the Christian life. It ought to be the opposite. So in other words, when you think about, uh, look at uh, the world, or the Christian ought to be the opposite of that, and uh, really in our pursuit of the Lord. And so think about, this is the willingness of man. Are we willing 
to rejoice evermore, to pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all things. You see, we have to be willing for, for us to be used because, it, let me put it this way, it's not a natural thing. It is not. It is something that has to be cultivated, something that has to be worked at, it's something that's work. Uh, because I know my nature. My nature says, I don't want to be thankful. I want more. <laughs> my nature is, I don't want to pray. I want to declare, show the world that I can do things on my own. I want to prove myself. You see, that's the nature of man. Uh, we also think, well, I, uh, you, you know, uh, there's people that perhaps have more bodily personalities than others, uh, but man left to himself is, is miserable and cannot rejoice uh, without the Lord, and we'll see that in just a moment. And so this ought to describe the Christian life. Are we willing to be people that rejoice, pray, and give thanks? So we see the willingness of man, but also, number two, we see the will of God. This is the will of God. He says specifically here, in verse 7, chapter 5, verse, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, there are many people today that struggle with or have trouble knowing the will of God. And uh, some people spend much time praying and asking God to reveal them what uh, His will is for their lives. They want direction. They want leading. But may I say that God, throughout His Word, points to specific things that are clearly His will for our lives. And may I say, if we do not do our will, uh, God's will in our lives, we will never know His will for our lives. You see, until we learn to do the will of God now that He wants us to do, then He directs us in knowing the will for the future. What is God's will for us today? And by the way, may I say every day? It's for us to rejoice evermore. That's God's will for today. It is for us to pray without ceasing. That's God's will for today. Uh, he wants us to give thanks in everything today. That is the will of God. Some people say, well, what's God's will for us today? What does God want me to do? Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. I believe that if we do those things, then He will direct our paths. You see, He will guide and direct us. It is a one step at a time thing as we follow the Lord's leading. And it is impossible to follow His leading unless our, an attitude has been developed in our lives to be obedient to His will. Again, the willingness of man to rejoice, to pray, and to be thankful. This is what pleases God. This is the will of God for our lives. You know, 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2, he says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind that Christ had. For he that, uh, that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh and the lust of men, but to the will of God. In other words, when God saved us, he changed us from living after the lust of the flesh, but now He changes us to direct our lives to doing the will of God. What is the will of God? Rejoice, pray, give thanks. That's the will of God. Again, uh, the opposite of what the world. God will, uh, God's will for us is, again, those things specifically, and we see those grouped throughout the Word of God uh, together. So we not only see here the willingness of man, we see the will of God, but number three, we see the wellspring where does this spirit of rejoicing, praying, and giving thanks come from? Well, he tells us right here. He says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Well, I forgot three words. In Christ Jesus. You see, we rejoice evermore, in Christ Jesus. We pray without ceasing in Christ Jesus. We give thanks in everything in Christ Jesus. How is it possible for a person to rejoice in Christ Jesus? How is it, is it possible for us to be a thankful people in Christ Jesus? Hebrews 12, 28, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved... Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Why? Because we have a kingdom that cannot be moved. 
Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit." You see, all those things are possible for us to do because of Jesus Christ. There is no true rejoicing, true praying, and true giving of thanks without Christ. It comes from Him. You see, He is the source, He is the wellspring, if you would, of getting to the place where we say, in everything, give thanks. In Philippians, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, let's consider he was in prison. All right? That is not the place where we would say, Hey, you know what? Just rejoice. Uh, in other words, we would have a hard time, all of us, if we'd visit uh, today a Christian that would be in prison because uh, of standing for the Lord Jesus Christ and preaching the gospel, and we would go to him and say, Hey, just rejoice. You'll be okay. Now, I think we would kind of sometimes find, but Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, just want you to know, in case you missed it, I did say, rejoice. And then he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. In other words, this idea of rejoicing is not something that is kept to ourselves. It's something that's published. It's something that is giving, uh, given forth. Uh, how do we, how does God know that we are thankful? Well, God knows my heart. <laughs> no, if you speak and thank Him. You know, Thanksgiving is not just about giving thanks. It's about giving thanks to the Lord. It's not just about being thankful for general, oh, I'm glad I'm alive today. Uh, it's about thanking the Lord. <laughs> you see, uh, there is something, it's, it's more specific than that. It's, it's deeper than that. And think about, the command is never, he never says, be thankful for your house, although we ought to be. He doesn't say, be thankful for your health, although we ought to be. What does he say? He says, be thankful. You know what that means? Whether you have a house or not, you ought to be thankful. Whether you have health or not, you ought to be thankful. You know, Paul really is the perfect example of that when the Lord Jesus Christ, but Paul, when things were going well in his ministry, uh, praising the Lord, when things were not going well in prison, on his deathbed, <laughs> rejoicing in the Lord. You see, sometimes we have the idea that the, the, this idea of thankfulness, it's almost a communicate, well, I thank God for how he has blessed us with this house and, uh, you know, and he's blessed us almost, and almost in our minds we think that if we didn't have those things then there would be no reason to give thanks to the Lord. But that's not the case at all. You see, he says, evermore, in everything, to all men. You see, it communicates to us the idea that it does not matter what the circumstances are that we are in life. We all have something to thank the Lord for. You see, this is commanded for the Christian life. Because to a world, can you imagine if a world would see a church, believers, and they would see someone in the church, someone that, man, he's wealthy, he's got a house, he's got a car, he's set for retirement, and he's thanking God. But then at the same time, they would see someone that perhaps doesn't have a whole lot, but yet they're still thanking God. You see, the world looks at that and says, you see, that's what the Christian life is. You see, rejoicing evermore, praying without ceasing, and in everything giving thanks. That is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, concerning us this evening. So, this evening is a giving thanks evening service. All right? uh, this is the will of God, so I think it'll, it ought to be a good thing. It ought to, it's a good thing for us to put that to practice this evening and thanking the Lord. Uh, and again, we ought to be thankful for things that, you know, we can be uh, thankful for spiritual things, for material things. But again, this is a, just a spirit of thankfulness. You know, thankfulness is not 
the result of what we have, thankfulness is about a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we're not thankful for the objects. We're thankful for the Lord. You see, He is the source of all things. And the attitude of thankfulness and rejoicing evermore has the idea of, I am satisfied with whatever God has brought in my life. That's the attitude, the cultivation, if you would, of a thankful spirit. Because our circumstances ought not to be dependent upon, right, the things that we have or don't have. They ought to be dependent upon the Lord. And what do we have in Christ? A sure foundation. You see, something that never changes. Something that's stable in our lives. Therefore, in everything, give thanks.